Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today I'm going to discuss the regrowing of ribs and finger bones. Not just repair, but actual regrowing. Now, I was alerted to this Mandela effect from Jen Ditt. She said, Hey, Eva, love your work so far, and this video is no exception. If I could ask a favor, could you kindly look into ribs regrowing? I briefly saw articles on the regrowth of removed ribs whilst looking into the myth of men having less ribs than women. I don't have the time to look into this properly and would value your opinion. Thank you. And she posted this on my uh, one about birds lactating milk now. So very good find. Yes, that is definitely a Mandela effect for me. What I remember is that you could not regrow ribs. You could not regrow anything like that. Um, some years ago, maybe 15 years ago, I do remember them saying that um, a man had cut off the tip of his finger and they had put some powder on it. And instead of letting it scab over, they kept that powder on there and his, he was able to regrow a tiny bit of, his, of one of his fingers. And the storyline at that time was that uh, the trick was to not let it scab over. The scab was somehow preventing regrowth and, and the powder was uh, some kind of protein scaffolding that was supposed to help prevent the scab and allow uh, the regrowth to continue. And I remember thinking that was super interesting at the time, but yet didn't hear anything about it again for years and years and years. So I wasn't sure if it was a scam or it couldn't been, they didn't, weren't able to replicate it or what. But anyways, that was the only thing that existed in my timeline. And back then I really looked into the whole thing and that was all there was. But apparently now, as uh, this very smart observer has noticed, we can regrow our ribs. This one's kind of an interesting um, issue because we have the Mandel effect that many see that people remember men having one less rib than women. Now, for me personally, I remember that there it was the story of men not having a about men losing a rib to to the uh, production of women, and that's the Bible story. But I had never ever heard anyone say or believe that men actually had less ribs than women. In fact, when I read that story, I would have assumed that, well, just that one man lost a piece of rib, but that didn't mean his offspring would lose the rib. I mean, if I lose a piece of my rib, but then I have children, those children still have all their ribs. So nobody actually believed that in my timeline to my knowledge. So that's interesting that some people have that memory because even though certainly there were a lot of people who believed in the Bible story, nobody was going around saying that men did not have that one piece of rib. So anyways, now they've got the storyline that you could grow back your ribs anyways. So if that was the case, then you wouldn't have a belief that men were missing a piece of rib. Okay, so this storyline, let's see if I can delete that. While we may not have the regenerative powers of a superhero, humans are surprisingly adept at regrowing ribs. So they, uh, they check this out in mice. Using CT imaging, the team monitored the healing of a human rib that had been partially removed by a surgeon, so they also did it in humans. They said they removed eight centimeters of missing bone. So that's, that's a pretty big chunk of bone, um, more than two inches. Um, they're kind of vague here on how much it grew back. Um, I, I wonder if that's going to keep changing, but you get the impression that they, they did grow back quite a bit of that those centimeters. It took only a few months. Um, the missing sections. Okay, so they're saying that if you remove it a certain way, it will grow, grow, will grow back. They will grow back, and that is uh, you have to remove it so that there's a sheath of tissue around the bone, and it... If that sheath of tissue is not damaged, it will regrow. Now, a ways back in one of my older videos, I was looking at uh, the skull bones and, and like that. And one thing I did add in at that time was that there was um, a sheath of tissue around bones that I did not recall existing before. And I didn't have much to add at that time, but now I see that this sheath is responsible for the regrowth of bones. So this sheath is new for me and it regrows bones. So very interesting. So they're saying that when they when they damaged the sheath or removed it, and that they're calling the sheath the perichondrium, then there was no regrowth of the bones. 
Okay, they also found that a, a perichondrium retains the ability to produce cartilage even when disconnected from the rib and displaced into nearby muscle tissue, further suggesting that perichondrium contains progenitor or stem cells. This never happened in my old reality. You wouldn't regrow bone separate from the first piece of bone. You wouldn't have chunks of bone growing all over the place separate. Um, I've discussed this before in old videos. They do have that here. There's like little bits of bone that grow all over the place. Cartilage turns into bone. You got a little BBs of bone all in your feet. You have little BBs of bone all in your hands and your joints. Um, and this is considered normal here. All right, so let's talk about this. Now, this guy was kind of looking into it, and, and he mentions, uh, did Adam's rib grow back? I heard a Christian lecture suggest the rib is the only bone in the body that can regenerate if it is removed. Naturally, the implication is this. If true is a possible reason that God removed one of Adam's ribs to make Eve rather than another bone, of course, if God could make Eve from one of Adam's ribs, he could regenerate any bone. Okay, so this kind of interestingly ties it in that the ribs uh, happen to be the ones that are regenerating now. I, I just find it interesting it ties in with the Bible story uh, so well. Okay, so the story here is that this guy um, had a, a lot of damage, a head-on impact with a fully laden fuel tanker at highway speeds. He survived it. During the five and a half month in the hospital for years afterward, I had a series of operations to reconstruct various parts of me, particularly the bones of my face. This operations often required using my own bone for grafting. I noticed that the plastic surgeon would keep going back to the right side of my rib cage through the same horizontal scar actually to get more bone for these procedures. One day I asked him why he hadn't run out of bone. He looked at me blankly, then explained that he and his team took the whole rib out each time we leave the periosteum intact, so the ribs usually just grow right back again. Despite having trained and practiced as a family doctor, I was intrigued. I had never realized this before. The periosteum is a membrane that covers every bone. It is the reason you can get things stuck between your teeth while gnawing on a, lar a leg of lamb, for instance. Huh, I, I don't... I thought that that was just tendon that would get stuck between your teeth, but I guess the story now and now is there's... Uh, more to it. The periosteum contains cells that can man manufacture new bone, particularly in young people. Rib periosteum has a remarkable ability to regenerate bone, perhaps more so than any other bone. Okay, so that's the story um, that this guy's rib bones just kept growing back and you could just keep harvesting them. I have never heard anything like that. That's just, that sounds pretty crazy. Uh, I think this one is kind of a really new thing that's developing now. Uh, there's some more stories in here from this uh, location. All right, so a couple, some of these places are um, calling it the periosteum and some are calling it the perichondrium. And, that was, uh, and that's, both are referring to a sheath around the bones. And they look like they're almost the same thing. The periosteum is a membrane that covers the outer surface of all bones, uh, lines the inner surface, the medullary cavity, and all long bones. Then they're, the perichondrium sounds like the same thing. A layer of dense irregular connective tissue that surrounds the cartilage of developing bone. Okay, so maybe the difference is the perichondrium is the part on the cartilage. Um, but here they're saying the difference is um, perichondrium, a layer of dense irregular connective tissue which sounds the car surrounds the cartilage. Once vascularized, once vascularized, the perichondrium becomes the periosteum. So they're almost the same thing right now. Um, I'm wondering if we'll see more differentiation between those two terminologies in the future. Right now, they, it sounds like they should be almost the same thing. Okay, so this is the one I saw um, long ago. Man's finger grows thanks to pig bladder powder. Um, let's see, when's this date? This date is uh, 2013. Yeah, that, that sounds about right when I heard about it, maybe. Um, they're not talking anything about the uh, scab effect preventing the regrowth in this one. So that, that either they didn't add that in or that storyline has changed. But now we have this one, how amputated fingers sometimes grow back. So back here, when he grew back a finger due to pig bladder powder, 
uh, that shouldn't have even been a big deal because sometimes they grow back in anyway. And the story nine now is if a piece of nail bed remains, then uh, it might grow back. The fingerprint will be gone and the tip may look a bit strange, but the flesh, bone, and nail could return. Now biologists at New York University have figured out how this lizard-like regeneration happens in mice. There's some secret sauce at the nail cuticle that makes it possible. All right, let's see. When's this article? This article is in 2013. You know, I looked like yeah, less than a year ago, and there, this was not on there. There was nothing about the cuticle. Uh, they were just saying that in, it was in young children. Sometimes young children um, would could grow back a finger. That was that was it. So now it's it's the cuticle is the new story. Kids will actually regrow a pretty good fingertip after amputation if you just leave it alone. The orthopedic surgeon saw this saw this out saw this out a few years ago when an eight year old girl stuck her finger into the spokes of her brother's bike. The wheel sliced off her middle finger near the the nail cuticle, and her fingers rushed to the hospital. He couldn't find the tiny artery needed to reconnect, so he opted instead for what surgeons call a biological dressing. Just stick the tip back on and hope for the best. Ah, uh, I've never heard of that. Stick the tip, <laughs> stick the tip on and hope for the best. And they don't. I guess they're not reattaching the uh, the veins and stuff. So the girl came back in a few weeks with the old fingertip in a bag and a new one on her hand. It was far better than anything I could have given her with a graft or surgery. So I guess the surgical dressing didn't work, but a finger grew back anyway. Uh, anyway, both of those things are Mandela's for me. I've never heard of them just stuffing the fingertip back on and crossing, crossing the fingers, as they say. Uh, scientists see a similar phenomenon with mice paws, but even elderly ro rodents can do it. It's totally amazing. The adult mice totally regenerate the organ to its original form. But the amputation must leave a little bit of the fingernail, er, claw, and she wants to figure out why. All right, so rats can do it. Anyways, well, here's the storyline. A mouse's fingertip completely regenerated after amputation. So right now, we've got fingertips and we've got rib bones that we can regenerate. And we've got the periosteum or the perichondrium around all bones that are that can apparently regenerate things. Okay, so the human body seems to be uh, getting a lot more resilient, but it's kind of being matched with the so-called science because they're saying they were able to regrow a dog's bone. A team of a team of Scottish researchers coated bone chips from the dog with a plastic material and other substances to make it grow. Six weeks later, the bone was completely healed. The dog would otherwise have needed amputation. So they're just saying it's bone chips. They coated bone chips from the dog, and it got a whole new bone. So that's, uh, that's interesting. But it sounds like pretty soon we might be able to just do it on our own. So anyway, um, there's the, the thing. This special thanks to Jen Ditt for getting me started on this. And... Uh, Looks like regeneration might be in the future of humans. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.